Hi, welcome to my farmhouse. I'm Leanne, and if you're new to my channel, I do cooking and baking from scratch, canning and dehydrating videos. If that sort of thing interests you, feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you find value in this video, please hit the thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow and I sure do appreciate it. Today's video is my contribution to March Canning Madness a collaboration hosted by Constance at a Good Life Farm. This collaboration is going to show you how we're preparing to get our freezers ready for the next growing season or just putting something up on our shelves that we might need, that we might be running out of. There will be a video each weekday and I'll leave a list to the participating channels down below so you can go subscribe and comment on each video. And Constance is going to be giving away a steam canner at the end of the month to one lucky viewer. And please leave genuine comments on each video. If you place the same comment on each video, YouTube might consider that spam and we want you to win. I'm going to be showing you how to hot pack chicken. This video was requested by several of my subscribers after I showed how to make chicken patties in the air fryer. So this video is for those subscribers. Let's get to canning, shall we? To can the chicken properly, we want to look at the National Center for Food and Preservation. It says to hot pack, you want to boil, steam, or bake your chicken two thirds of the way done. And then we're going to use a inch and a quarter head space. And I want you to make sure you understand it's more than an inch because chicken will expand more than other white meats. All right, so far I have my pot of water. Get it to boiling. You want to make sure you use a dedicated cutting board for meat versus a cutting board for vegetables or anything else. You also want to make sure your hands are clean and your equipment's clean and do not wash your chicken. We are going to be canning about eight pounds of chicken and you can usually fit a pound of chicken into a pint sized jar. And we're gonna cut into about one to two inch square pieces. You don't wanna go any smaller than that. So I have my cutting board on top of a cookie sheet. That way you don't have a mess on your counter. And we're gonna be baking this. I've never tried it. I've always boiled my chicken then, but you can't use the broth that you cook the chicken in for your jars. So we're just going to boil some hot water and we're going to trim some fat off. And I usually get a 40 pound box or maybe even two or three at a time for my local Mennonite bulk food store when it was 82 cents a pound. But I'm not sure if those days are never going to happen again and I would can lots and lots of chicken at the same time. That way I would only have to do it once a year. But now it's cheaper for me to buy it at the grocery store than it is the bulk food store because the bulk food store wants $3 a pound for chicken and the grocery store only wants $2. So, so we'll just buy a couple pounds at a time and not have to have a massive canning day because I do most of my canning by myself. All right, so we're going to end up having two sheets of chicken in the oven and baking for two thirds of the way cooked. I baked the chicken at 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes. Then while your chicken's in the oven, you want to change the cutting board. Now you want to prepare your sink by scrubbing it with hot soapy water before you fill it up with soap. That way your sink is clean. And I use a dedicated brush for just canning. That way everything is clean. Okay. 
Before you put your jars in the sink, you wanna make sure there is no cracks along the rim. That way you have a good seal. Also, you need to fill up your canner with the right amount of water, so check your manual. It'll tell you how many quarts you might need. I need three quarts of water. I have a All-American from the 1930s. All right. Gonna place our can on the stove. And we're gonna put it at a low heat. That way our water will get hot because you wanna pack hot food into hot jars into a hot canner. So this should be pretty hot when you get there. All right, you wanna take your jar brush and scrub it like you can't get something out of your white dress with, and you just got it or just made it. All right. And you wanna wash your lids because you don't know in the factory where they might've been. So I have everything I need to can with. I got my chicken, my boiling water, my funnel, my debubbler, my rings, and I'm just using a paper towel holder to hold my rings on, my spring-loaded jar lifters, my clean lids, and my paper towel. So you just wanna put your chicken in the jar. You can pack it down some, but don't pack it too tight. So far, I like baking it versus boiling it. Now remember, we need an inch and a quarter head space. All right. Then you want to bubble your jar. Make sure there's no air that's trapped inside. Then we'll measure our head space. Make sure it's that inch and a quarter. All right. Then you want to, I'm not adding salt because I like to add salt when I'm cooking something. My husband doesn't like to taste salt in his food. He wants to taste his food. So I don't put so much in. All right, we'll put the lid on and put it on fingertip tight, put it in the canner. And if you don't think you did something, do it again. So we're gonna debubble. Wipe the lid. and put it in the canner. All right, let's fill out a jar or two. All right, so you just wanna make sure there's no cracks, because you never know what happens in the sink, stays in the sink. Because you don't want a density issue in your jars. All right. And chicken meat is so tender when it comes out of your jar. I used to be afraid to even think about canning it. Think it would taste terrible or it would taste rubbery or anything else. But I love it in casseroles and pasta dishes and canning or yeah, in chicken patties obviously in chicken salad 
I also prefer to hot pack just because when you raw pack your chicken or ugly chicken, it sticks to the jar and that's more time to cleaning it. And also when you hot pack it, you'll get more chicken in the jar, which also in turn is using less lids. And since lids are very hard to find nowadays, I'd rather have my lids where I need them. And also my husband is a very hungry person because he works a lot on the farm. So I need to make sure he has all the protein he can get. We're gonna debubble, 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 debubble. Make sure our chicken's below the water. And make sure it's an inch and a quarter headspace. Then we'll wipe our water off our rims. Place the lid on and put our ring on, fingertip tight, and then to the canner. Now we're gonna put the canner on medium high heat. And I don't put vinegar in my water in my canner because a lot of YouTubers will tell you that it is hard on your rings. We're just gonna put And you want to put the locks on opposite each other for an all-american and if it leaks that means you need to put a little vaseline around the top there which i don't usually have a problem with it i don't think i've ever had a problem with it all right then when it steams for 10 minutes, we'll be back. All right, this is what the steam coming out of the canner should look like before you, you count 10 minutes to pressurize your canner. Find our 10 on our weight and put it on the vent and we'll wait for it to come up to 10 pounds of pressure. All right, we're gonna set the timer for 75 minutes. And you want to slowly adjust your your element to make sure you're holding your 10 pounds of pressure. All right, we are about to be done processing. And as soon as the timer goes off, you just want to turn the burner off and walk away. Go eat some ice cream. Go sing a song or go hug your kids or your loved ones, but you gotta wait till that comes down to zero before you even think about opening that lid. All right, now we're gonna take the weight off. Let it finish coming down from pressure. I hear them sealing. Just sit like this for 10 minutes. You want to slowly bring them down to temperature. It is the next day. We have left our chicken sit on the counter for 24 hours. And we're gonna check the seal by just holding it. And if it comes unsealed, just put it in your refrigerator and eat it in the next three days. But you wanna make sure they seal before the 24 hours. You can reprocess them, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would just drain the juice into an ice cube tray and freeze that for when you need a little bit of extra stock in your cooking, then just freeze the chicken. It's still just cooked chicken. All right, we're gonna fill up the sink with hot soapy water. And I'm gonna add some vinegar. This is where we'll get our jars nice and clean from hard water. You wanna wash your jar and make sure that lid is on there. 
and we'll put it on the towel to dry. And you wash your rings and make sure they get dry quickly. That way they don't rust. I use a king size marker to label my jars. I label it no matter what, unless it's green beans. And I just put what it is and the month and year I can it. Then it's ready for the seller. Thank you so very much for watching. If you've made it this far in the video, I'm sure you're loving the content of this channel. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And may I suggest watching this next? Take care and God bless.